What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, nice like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Einstein Bagels, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, and eight-figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out Rise25.com. It's run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran, and it's application only. Today, I'm very excited. We have Jay Steinfeld. He's the founder of Blinds.com. He set up the original e-commerce site, No Brainer Blinds, for $3,000 in 1996, and his first domain in 1993, and has since grown the e-commerce company to over $200 million in annual revenue. It's the world's top retailer for blinds and shades, and provides blinds for over 1 million windows every year, and the company was acquired in 2014 by Home Depot, and one of the most impressive feats, Jay, in my mind, is you went one-on-one selling into people's homes for 14 years while helping raise three kids, sometimes working seven days per week. Uh, Thanks for joining me. Uh, It's great to be here. Thanks for asking me to be here. I want to talk a little bit about marketing. That's really, I mean, you you helped a lot with Meineke and the marketing. So I want you to set the stage in, I think, videos. I want to talk about all the marketing because you do radio, TV, but the videos in 97, you filmed something in your bathroom? Yes. <laughs> back, back in the day, uh, I was doing social media and I was using videos and reciprocal uh, links, all that stuff. I, needed, I thought it would make it much easier for people to understand how to install a blind if they saw a video of it. Makes sense. So we're yeah. using quick t- I mean, that's pretty logical. Yeah. And we have hundreds of videos that we now produce in our own studio. Yeah. But at the time, I had a videographer who filmed me as the installer in my bathroom okay. uh, installing a blind. The videos, they're pretty hilarious. Are they're they out there? It. Are they out there? Yeah. Are they on your site? I, I can, I can, I'll send you those links. I wanna, they're not I on the put site. I one of those on there. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll show you what they're like. They're about 15 seconds. Okay. And the instructions are, uh, your blind comes with all the, all the brackets and instructions. Take it out of the box, put the brackets up, snap in the blind, it's a no-brainer. That was, that was the whole video. Right. <laughs> but the, you could actually tell how to do it from that, and you'll, you'll, when you see it, that will be me in the background pulling up the, the shade and the announcer was the videographer, so he edited it, he shot it, and was the announcer of these of these videos. I think I've got three that I can find. That's great. Are, there, are they on YouTube or on your site? Or I just they're nowhere. Oh, they're nowhere. I just have them in my own okay. library. Okay, I want to see them. Yeah, I'll I'll send them to you. Bob Vila style videos or something. Yes. Yes. Uh, um, but it was important to do that. Oh, for sure. I mean, that's ahead of its time too. I mean, '97. Who's who's shooting videos? Right. I mean, and we had referrals, we had uh, ratings, we had social media where people would go on to uh, uh, bulletin boards or what they were called, and I would have have in my my signature, no brainer blinds, CEO, right, right. and people would ask a question about blinds, and I would answer it. Yeah, like forums well, and bulletin boards. Yeah, there were forums. Yeah. But they were really called like all dot consumers or something like that. Early social media. Really, yeah. Yeah. Deja News is what I used, I think, to ferret out those different bulletin boards and forums. Yeah. yeah. That was how I did the advertising. And I would go into one of those, and I probably found two or three that had actually a decent number of questions, which would mean three a day or something like that. Right. And answer those, and I would be scouring and try to get in there before anybody else could do that. Right. That's how I advertise. Yeah. That was, that's really social media. Yeah. So I know like the majority of the customers come from people who are happy rebuying or referring other people. What about from the marketing side? 
Um, you did you did SEO. You did a lot of SEO early on because I read like you had one of the yeah. top SEO people ever. He's Danny the top Sullivan. guy. Right. Uh, his name is Danny. How Sullivan. did you even meet him? I mean, uh, search engine uh, watch. Danny Sullivan. He's like the guru of uh, right. search engine. He actually did my my uh, my search engine marketing. He actually right. personally did it. Right. You, I, how did I find out about him? Is he local in, in Dallas? No, he actually lives in England. Oh. I think he probably still lives in England. The time he, he did good him. SEL. That's probably how you found out. <laughs> <laughs> probably so. There was a guy called Eric, Eric Ward, who was really big in publicity. Right. I found him online to do publicity. Yeah. He probably told me about Danny. And then, there was another guy, Nick Usborne, who was a copywriter. And I know. Really I've, I've interviewed Nick. Yeah. Nick, yeah. Yeah. So ask yeah. Nick about us. So he's written about me. Yeah, yeah. And he's a great guy. I think he's in Canada. Yeah, I think I'm you're not right. Sure. But he was that was back in the really he's a great early copywriter. Days. Yeah. So it was Nick, Danny, and Eric were my three mentors of online. And there wasn't really much of anybody else at mm. the time. Yeah. So radio and TV. What did you do? Because radio worked for you too, right? We're still doing a lot of radio. We've been doing radio for about six, seven years. Okay. And so, that's, uh, it's hard to measure, but uh, we're, we're able to measure it. And so many people now, over consistent many, many years, say, oh, yeah, we heard this guy talk about you and that guy. It's mostly um, uh, radio host endorsed, but we do a lot of others. Yeah. I get people, uh, for, the, for the bonus spots, I do those reads. So people say, hey, I heard you on the radio. I got a guy just yesterday write me and say, I heard you on the Howard Stern show. Oh, really? Because you were one of the commercials? Yeah. That's great. That, that is funny. The first time I, I knew we were on Howard Stern uh, was when my son said his friends were telling him that they kept hearing me on Howard Stern. And I didn't even know. <laughs> That's great. So that yeah. works. And TV, does that work at all? TV, uh, TV works pretty well. Uh, we're, we were always experimenting with that. Uh, Pay-per-click advertising, AdWords, Bing, things like that. We, we do a lot of that. But over 60% of our business comes from happy customers, repeat and referred right, customers. Right. And if we were to have to buy traffic, then we would not make money. Right. You can't buy traffic and be in business. You have to do a good job yeah. and uh, to stay in business yeah. and in order to make to make money. Yeah. So when does Home Depot enter the picture? Because you, they, you, they acquired us in 2014, right. so it's, it'll be three years this January. Did you have some kind of? Because I read in an interview somewhere. This is before you got acquired, and it says we just created a partnership with some big public companies. It launched two weeks ago. I can't really talk about it. This yeah. was this was maybe. I'm, I'm thinking it was three years prior to Home Depot. Well, we eventually you. probably talked about it. We were we were selling. Well, no, I mean at the time for, you couldn't talk about Sears. it. Yeah, we had done a, uh, a powered by a white label cart to cart integration for Sears. Okay, helping them sell blinds. Right. We also did sell blinds for Wayfair, which right now is is huge. That was in their in the, in the beginning, and those were great proofs of uh, concept for us right? because when Home Depot and some other big stores came to us and started looking at us, right. the fact that we were proven to be able to support yeah. public company, Sears, yeah. and an emerging public company, yeah. that was Wayfair, huge. who was known for their IT, right. that gave us a lot of credibility. That was the way we were intending to grow, by using that model for being that center engine for other big retailers. Yeah. And that was one of the reasons why Home Depot came to us and said, you know what, we don't want you doing that for them, we want you doing that for us. Right. And, and the company was making a lot of money and was growing at very high rates of growth. And uh, we thought it was being run pretty well. It's being run better now as being part of Home Depot. Yeah know a lot more about ourselves than we did then but we were highly successful and growing very rapidly and it yeah. was real fun but we weren't at the time looking to sell yeah they came so to they, you they came to us okay yeah we had we had no book 
anything. We, when they came, they said, are you interested in talking? We said, sure, we'll, we'll talk to you. So they and made an offer you couldn't refuse? Yes, they did. Yeah. Actually, I did refuse the first offer. You did? Okay, that's smart. <laughs> <laughs> it, we eventually were able to work out something that was uh, not only financially uh, acceptable, but because it's Home Depot and because our, our, our mission was always to take our platform and to sell not just blinds but other products right. that were very difficult to buy yeah. and transform those transactional transactions into experiences yeah. that were surprisingly easy, we were going to then have to acquire a company in order to do that with some other category. Yeah. Now we're taking that platform and working with Home Depot and leveraging it across the enterprise, which is very fun for me because now I'm an entrepreneur and in a corporate executive, right. side by side. Uh, one is a little more fun than the other. But <laughs> we'll take our guess which one is that. Yeah. But it's still intriguing and quite rewarding to yeah. be working with super smart people who are dominating, and to be able to do something and leverage something far beyond anything that I and any of my team yeah. could have done on our own. Yeah. We liken it to Iron Man, where we consider ourselves Tony Stark, right, right. and Jarvis is Home Depot yeah. in the suit. Jay, this is awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so how long does that take once they decide to make an offer to actually closing like with paperwork and negotiation, how long does it take for when you enter into discussion to them actually finalizing everything? It happened within uh, the whole thing from the initial paperwork to the, the fully negotiated uh, purchase agreement with everything signed. It happened in about four or five months, including, wow, that's all, the, quick. including all the due diligence. That seems quick. It was very quick. They were determined... And we had a very clean operation, yeah. So there wasn't a whole lot. I guess of your background's in accounting, right? So like, <laughs> so well, I had uh, good people, yeah, yeah. And and things were organized, and we were doing well. There and there was no skeletons, yeah. So it was a pretty clean. You know, they had, I think, over a hundred people in our in our data room, looking around, asking a lot of nosy questions, but good questions that they they right. needed to ask. Right, right. But we we had good answers. So they were determined to do it. They wanted to get it done, yeah. and uh, we wanted to. And there were there were instances where there were some tricky things along the way. But right. when you have two parties both intent on getting something right. done, right. it seems like you can almost always work out a solution that's good for yeah. everybody. Yeah, we were always able to do it. And when the people who were we were working with, a guy by the name of George. Uh, he and I had a really good relationship, and we were able to work through almost everything. The attorneys had had good, solid intent, yeah. And every all the negotiations were done to make the deal work, so everybody yeah. would be happy. Yeah. And nothing has changed in the way I've worked with things. them in the past, and what how I'm working with them now. I'm still feeling the really good intentions. It just takes longer for things to happen than it did. Right back in the past, but ultimately it seems like it's uh, working out. It's been three years. Yeah. What should people think about or look at, look out for when being acquired or making an acquisition since you've been through this? And you've made acquisitions too, obviously. We've made four acquisitions. Yeah. I think the question of culture and control yeah. are the big things that people worry about. Yeah. And in our case, it was not a roll-up. It was not buying us to meld us into this organization. Like my wrong term of mushing it together. Yes. 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 It wasn't mushing yes. it, it together. Wasn't a, it wasn't a mush. Yes. It, was, it wasn't a meld of, of right. things to, to drive cost out. I got you. Certainly, you're always looking to drive cost out. Yeah. But it was to take our, our culture, our capabilities, the technology that we had built on our own. That yeah. technology was really the first reason they came to us. Really? Because we had built this this web commerce platform yeah. in-house that was product agnostic. It was not only just killing it in blinds, but it could apply. We built it specifically mm. to, to not be hard-coded for blinds. Yeah. And then they saw the culture, they saw the contact center. And uh, so for us, 
it was, are they really wanting to do all these other things? And then it's about how much cash do you get versus right. stock. And if you're, I guess if you get enough cash, the other stuff doesn't matter. Right. Right. And I'm not saying I got enough cash and I'm not saying anything about my own personal situation. Right. But I would, if you're selling your, your business, the amount of cash you get is very important. Yeah, for sure. And the control that you have and whether if you're going to be, if it is a mush kind of deal, <laughs> right. then you know that whatever culture you have, it's going to be gone. Yeah. Because it can't work. Right. The, the acquirer's culture is what must prevail. And you have to blend into it. And if you think that's not going to happen, then you're being naive. Right. And that's why most entrepreneurs that sell their company don't last more than three months. Right. Sometimes a week. Yeah. And certainly no more, no longer than, than a year. Yeah. It's very rare. I've been told a handful of people will be there three years. Right. And I, I'm still feeling a you're lot so, of energy, good. a lot of opportunity. So global custom commerce is the platform, right? How many developers? Well, that's the name of the company. Oh, that's the name of the company. The company I... name is Global Custom Commerce. I gotcha. We just happen to have as a website, Blinds.com. Got... Gotcha. We say Blinds.com because it's easier to say. You don't have to go through the whole... I would say it because there's a technology behind what you're running. How many developers do you need on staff to construct? Well, we have 65 people in our IT department. Okay. They're yeah. not all engineers. Yeah. They're not all developers. Yeah. QA. Yeah. VAs. We've got uh, network people. We've got help desk. Yeah. So we talked before we started, um, before we record, about people ask you why you stay on for so long as the okay. CEO. Well, the, to kind of bring it all together now, yeah. if my core values truly are to experiment without fear, to improve continuously, yeah. to speak up, and to have fun then I have just gone to the biggest arena for that I could possibly imagine. Right. I'm not going to start my own company when I have the opportunity to impact a $100 billion company right. and to do it in a way that's particularly hard. And if I'm already financially secure, I don't have to worry as much about the politics. I don't have to worry about if somebody is upset with me and I don't have the job, that's fine. So what that enables me to do is to truly speak up yeah. with deference and respect, yeah. but only say those things that I truly believe are in the best interest of the enterprise. Right. And when they know I'm coming from that, I get to experiment, I get to try new things and do things that really in, in retail have not been done before. Yeah. And because they're particularly hard and very challenging, it's fun. And yeah. we're all trying to do things that have not been done before. Yeah. So this is a perfect place to do it. Yeah. What's the skill set you've had to develop as a CEO that's different from the entrepreneur side of things? Uh, that's interesting. Uh, w when you're an entrepreneur, you're basically a product expert on how to sell and service that product. Yeah. Now you have to learn how to create a business. It's like you can be a really great cook, but not necessarily run a restaurant. Right. So I've had to learn how to run a restaurant, yeah. not cook. Yeah. So that means how to hire how to develop organizations, uh, how to uh, how to train, how yeah. to uh, establish an environment, culture, yeah. establish a vision, how to communicate the vision, how to execute on it, capacity analysis, all the things that you've got to do to actually run yeah. uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of, of a business. Right. Right. And my job now has changed this year versus what it was last year. And I will, will believe in the, that that job will continue to change because now a lot yeah. of my job is an ambassador job where I have to make sure that the vision that we see is communicated broadly and clearly among yeah. 8,000 people that are just in the, the headquarters wow. of, uh, of Home Depot. Yeah. There's another almost 400,000 associates in the stores. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, I, that's a lot of what I'm doing. Now I see the theme. Like I, re, you know, you are, I encourage anyone to check out the articles you wrote. An article, a lot of articles on Inc. and a lot of them have theme of hiring. I think one was on why hiring is like making trail mix or something like that. Yeah. Right. Yes. Exactly. 
everything that I think about is about creating the right system, the right process, yeah. the right environment, and then hiring the right people that fit within the type of environment that you want, yeah. and being very clear about the direction that you want to go in, and making sure everybody knows what their role is, and what, what that long-term role is, and how their short-term job today uh, is tied to that. Yeah. And as we've gotten bigger, it's been much harder for me to do it, and I've actually not done a good job of that over the last year, because we have now 350 people, and it's just it's just impossible yeah. to be able to do what I used to do. And I just hired a chief people officer a few months ago, and he's going to shore up a lot of the deficiencies that I've got in time. And he's got the expertise, and he's trained in organizational design and communication. He's he's fantastic, and we're a better company because now he's shoring up my weakness of not being able to do it. Yeah. Jay, two last questions, and and this is thank you again. This has been truly amazing. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, I always ask, since it's Inspired Insider, what's been the lowest business moment and how you push through it? And then on the flip side, what's been the proudest um, for you? Well, the lowest is already self-evident when my wife passed away. That's, yeah. Yeah, self-evident. Yeah. That was really bad. That's and, the lowest uh, of the low, yeah. Yeah, you, I, I couldn't get much lower than that. I, can, I, can only, I don't even want to think about things that could be worse than that. Right. So that was, that was by far the worst. I was able to get through it. i am uh, got that paradox of feeling blessed and sad simultaneously. And I'm still sad every day. Yeah. But I'm also blessed and feel very optimistic and grateful yeah. for where I am today. So yeah. that's... that's um, that took a lot of work and thinking and introspection and support from family, friends, and my associates here. Yeah. As far as the high point, yeah. it seems like every day is another high point. Yeah. Because as you're incrementally improving, and I really think it's more about evolving, yeah. evolving seems to happen almost every second. Like a tree doesn't just sometimes grow and doesn't grow. Right. Every second, the cells are hopefully getting a little bit bigger and growing. Right. And that's how I feel about myself. Yeah. And as I feel like we get more and more capabilities and more people who are doing things that I don't do, and I don't even know what the hell they're doing sometimes, I'll be walking by a meeting room and see people, and I don't even know who some of the people are. I think, that is so cool. I don't even know who they are, but I know they're smart. I know they're doing a good job, I know they're organized, and I know they're probably going to get this done on time, right. whatever it is. Right. And I think that's a blessing to feel like what I was doing when I was working seven days a week and doing everything myself. Right. And now there's people who I don't even know their name. And in some cases, sometimes I see somebody I, I didn't even know that they worked for us, and they're doing a great job. That's, that's pretty some cool. Some of them probably don't even know who you are. Is that possible? <laughs> Maybe. We do an all-hands meeting every okay. Thursday, okay. and I'm actually at the Maybe front. Maybe not. So if they don't know, they're really not okay. paying attention. They're like, who's this guy? Like, oh, he's the boss. <laughs> it is funny when people just start, but there's enough pictures of me going around okay. to figure they know who I am. Okay. Selling the company was obviously... Yeah, so how do you celebrate? Point. How do you celebrate after Home Depot? It's official. How did we celebrate? Yeah. Uh, we had a 30-year-old bottle of Macallan. Okay. That was a little Ohio for, for that. Right. And then we, um, we just got to work yeah. and said, all right, we've done that. Now let's, let's keep going. And now we've got an opportunity to pro tell, propel ourselves and do something really of significance. Yeah. So just kept doing what we yeah. were doing. Yeah. Jay, fantastic. We didn't get to talk about the barbershop quartet, which is amazing. Maybe there's some videos I can clip in on that. Other videos online about yeah. that? Okay. And also, I just want to know, you know, you, you also give back a lot. And I see, you know, stuff with prison entrepreneurship programs and helping vet days with through the, the building opportunities right. that you guys provide too. So it's just... And the one great thing that we're doing, which is not quite as as uh, benevolent as what you're talking about, but I'm part of XPRIZE. XPRIZE, yeah. Yeah, and XPRIZE is really cool because you've got all these amazing entrepreneurs that are just trying to change civilization and make, do things that 
through incented prizes that could never have been yeah. done before. Yeah. And being part of that and having using money for that purpose with virtual reality, augmented reality, and science, and yeah. all the things, all the exponential technology that is here and now yeah. and will be completely changing the world, that's another way to continue to stay improving, yeah. experimenting, and having fun. Yeah. Jay, thank you again. Everyone should check out blinds.com. Anywhere else we should point people towards, maybe Inc. to check out your, your articles. Anywhere else online? That... Inc.com, blinds.com, either okay. of those, okay. that would be fine. Look yeah. at, check out XPRIZE. That's XPRIZE. Really yeah. XPRIZE, yeah. Dot org. Great. You know, Jay? I, it's been my pleasure. Thank you. I'm, I'm honored that you felt that I would somehow help your show. And thank you very much yeah. for that opportunity. Yeah. Really. Jay, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thanks a lot. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, like like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. No brainer blinds and shades. Installation of wood and aluminum blinds. You'll receive clear instructions and all necessary hardware. Attach the brackets. Put the valance clip on the head rail. Slip the blind into the brackets. Snap on the valance. It's a no-brainer. No-brainer blinds and shades. Installation of cellular shades. You'll receive clear instructions and all necessary hardware. Attach the brackets. Fasten the shade to the brackets. It's a no-brainer.